Guys, Mr. Bowman here. We're looking at the 2.12 probability methods external. Um, this time around, we're focusing on all those merit questions from the 2017 exam. So question number four from the website. Um, basically, what proportion of young adults were female non-smokers is what we're looking at. So we've got some data about obese or not obese, male or female. And hidden down there in the words, we've got some more information about if the people smoke or not. Um, the issue with this question, or well, what made it quite challenging, so question number four, we'll get into it. What made it quite challenging was we were interested in the relationship between gender and their smoking habits, which isn't this two-way table. So what we needed to do, we actually needed to build another two-way table which explored female and male. So up here, that can be the genders, male and female, and up the top here, S for smoking, S dash for not smoking. So our two-way table, we need to change how it looks. Um, so we know the grand total. So we we only care about the obese people in this survey. So that's that 507 down there. There is 507. Of the obese people, 222 were male and 285 were female. The rest of the information is going to come from the hidden numbers in the in the words. Um, it was found that of these young adults, 103 were current smokers. So this smoking total here is going to be 103, which means that there is 404. And if you're wondering how I got that, I've got 507 minus 103. That minus that gave me the leftover portion in the middle. So that was the 103 number. We've used that. We've now got the 53 number. 53 of the current smokers were male. So that would be this group up here. So 53, male and smokers. So that there is 53. We can then work out the rest. This here, we can use the subtraction trick that we used down before just to calculate the rest of the numbers. And that there is going to be 50. Up the top, 169. Down the bottom, 235. So now that we've got our filled out table, we can actually go ahead and answer the question. So what we're doing here is we're trying to find well, what's the probability of a female non-smoker? Don't forget, given they were obese, and that's because we've made a separate table just on the obese members of that, of or the obese participants of that survey we looked at. Um, we're now going to get into F over T. Total, nice and easy. There were 507 obese people. They're the only ones we're interested in. Of those 507, how many were female and non-smokers? That's that 235 in that group there. So that there is 235. Plug that into your calculator. Hopefully, you're going to get 0 0.4635. And again, that had my 4DP rounding. So pretty challenging merit question. The idea of needing to redo another two-way table um, is a very tricky idea. There were some ways you could have just figured out this number from your head. Um, and found the probability without a two-way table, but you're probably more likely to make a little math error somewhere on the, along the way when you're doing that stuff. Okay, we are now looking at question number five, and this is another table question, but that word risk there is a really nice word to see in your exam because that, for me, is a really easy merit question that comes from those. Um, sometimes even excellence questions as well. So we've got a two-way table, and we're looking at obese versus current and non-current smokers, and it has been claimed that young smokers were more at risk of being obese than young adult non-smokers. So that what that's trying to say is someone's claimed that if you smoke, you are more likely to be obese when compared with if you don't smoke. Um, basically, we now need to look into the data. Do the results from the survey support this claim? So, Let's get into the questions. So first thing is we need to find out the two probabilities. So what's the probability of being obese given you are a smoker? So we need to find that. And we need to compare that with the probability of being obese given you are a non-smoker. So we need to think about our F over T approach for both questions. So we, in this first probability question, we only care about smokers, and in which case that's 420 of them. So that's our denominator, 
So of those 420 smokers, how many of them, so of the 420, oh, yeah, smokers, how many of them are obese? 103. And we plug that into our calculator to find out that 0 0.2452, and that was 4DP rounding. So 0 0.4252, is the probability that if someone smokes, that they're obese. We then do the same with the second question, F over T. We only care about the non-smokers this time, so that's our total down the bottom. So the non-smokers, 2080. Of those 2,080 smokers, how many of them are obese? We've got 404. And that there has a probability of 0 0.1942. So that there had a 4DP rounding. Now that we've got the probability of the both, we now need to interpret the numbers and link them back to the claim in the question. So they claimed that if you were a smoker, you were more likely to be obese than if you're a non-smoker. And looking at the numbers, I think the numbers suggest that you're, there's a 5% greater chance that you're going to be obese if you smoke versus if you don't smoke. If maybe there was a 1% or 2% difference, you might say, oh, it's too close to call. Um, maybe something else is happening, but 5% is a pretty big percentage. So we can probably say, yes, that claim is correct based on our numbers. So our data supports the claim that smokers are more likely to be obese when compared to non-smokers. So just to note, use the phrase more likely. We can't say that smokers are obese and non-smokers aren't obese. This is always a degree of probability, I'm sure. Um, there's people in the world, maybe there are people who smoke and their bodies are absolutely fine. And then there's people who are obese who don't smoke um, as well. So it is a degree of probability. We can't be certain about it. Hence why we use, we use phrases like more likely. Okay, we are now on to question six. And this question wasn't actually too well done in the exam because everyone looked at it and was like, geez, this is just too long. I'm going to move on to the next question. But when you break it down, I actually thought it was one of the easier questions in there. And um, if you're strong with, you know, that idea of the multiplication principle, that you can multiply probabilities together to find the probability of combined events, if you're confident with that, you should be really confident with this question. So we've got a hybrid, Highbrook station, two breeds of sheep, Merino or Romney. Um, and the information in this table tells us about the lambing season, if there was no lamb, single lamb, or multiple lambs there. After the lambs were weaned, the ewes were sorted. Some were culled, which means they weren't kept. Maybe they were sold um, to another farmer. And that information is down below. So if you were a Romney and culled, there's some probabilities. Um, and we were told the ratio of Romney to Merino breeding ewes at the station at the beginning of the season was 3 to 2. According to the data in tables 4 and 5, at the end of the 2016 lambing season, what proportion, so that's finding the probability, were Romney's no lamb and cold? So that's what we're trying to find out. So what's the probability that a randomly selected one was of the Romney breed. They had no lamb and they were culled. So we need to go ahead and use our multiplication principle. So we're going to break this down. So to find that probability, we need to go, well, the probability of the random U being Romney times the probability of not having a lamb given they were a Romney, because we know that they're Romney, times the probability of being culled given they were a Romney with no lamb. So it is fairly complicated, um, but 
pretty straightforward once you get into it. So the first thing is, what's the probability of a Romney? And we were told down the very bottom, it was actually hidden, and that was one of the parts that people struggled with, that Romney to Marino, three to two. So that means if there were five youths in total, you would expect three of them to be of the Romney breed. So that's a probability of 0.6. We then have to multiply that by the probability that they did not have a lamb given they're a Romney. So we can see here, here's the Romneys. And Romneys had a 0.06% chance of not having a lamb. Also 0.06 is the probability. So that there is the Romney not having a lamb. And then finally, what was the probability they were culled if they were Romney without lamb? And you can kind of see, there you go, there's the Romney ewes that were culled, there's them not having a lamb. So there was 0 0.88. So it looks like they got rid of most of the Romney ewes that didn't have a lamb. We've got the three numbers, we can now multiply them together. That gets me to 0 0.0317, and that they had a 4DP rounding. Yeah, so at the end of the day, all we had to do was multiply three numbers together. Um, it was just pulling out the numbers from the question that made this one very challenging, and that's because there's a whole heap of information here. Okay, final question, question number seven from the website or the 2017 exam. We're now looking at part I from this question. Um, so salmon are grown in sea pens. Each pen contains several thousand salmon. Geez, that's quite a bit. Um, after one year, male salmon have weights that are approximately normal, normally distributed. So I love to see that phrase normally distributed. I know exactly it's going to be a normal distribution question. It's got a mean of 4125, standard deviation of 65. Part II, let's add an extra I here. What is the weight of the lightest 10% of salmon? Um, so no surprise, draw your normal distribution graph. Um, and here we've got a mean 4,125 and a standard deviation of 65. Lightest 10% of salmon, so that's going to be the smallest number. So X is what we're trying to find out. We know that area is 0 0.1 and we've got a regular inverse normal distribution question. And on your calculator, you need to know what tail it is. We're dealing, I'm starting to say right, but we're definitely dealing with a left tail. And that's because the shaded portion is on the left hand side. Our area that relates to the probability, 0 0.1, standard deviation of 65, and we've got a mean of 4,125. Put that all into your calculator, and that's going to tell you that x is equal to 4,041.6 grams. And that there, I rounded to one decimal point. So pretty straightforward. I think those are really easy merit questions that we should all be targeting. Um, let's have a look at IV now. Um, the pens contained an equal number of male and female salmon. When they were harvested, all the salmon were approximately normal, normally distributed. So this here were male salmon. We're now talking about, you know, all of the salmon, so both male and female here. The combined new numbers, they've got a mean of that and a standard deviation of that. Um, when salmon are harvested, each member of the harvest team is given two salmon. That's what makes it a multiplication type question as well. If the salmon were ran selected at random, what is the probability that both salmon were more than 4,025? Um, so to do this, we need to find the probability that one salmon is more than that weight. So our mean, 4,050, our standard deviation, 84. The x value we're interested in, 4,025. And more than anything bigger than that, don't forget about your upper limit, four nines. From that, we don't know the probability. We're going to go ahead and use the NCD mode to find that. So our lower is 4,025. Our upper, that's the four nines. Our standard deviation is 84. And our mean, 4,050. And that can tell us, well, what's the probability that the weight is more than 4,025 grams? Put that into your calculator. I'm getting 0 0.167. And that there, I rounded to 3DP um, this time around. 
once you've got that, that there would actually get you an achieved mark, but it is a merit question. We've now been asked about the probability that both are more than that. So working over here, probability that both weigh more than that number, 4025, and that there would be the probability of them being more than that number um, times itself. So we're going to square that. So there's 0 0.167 squared, and when you square that, you're going to get 0 0.3807, and that they had a 4DP rounding. So guys, hopefully you found these merit questions useful. Um, keep an eye out for the other videos, and make sure you're looking at some excellent stuff in your revision as well.